Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are making homemade pizza. There is nothing more delicious or easy. Now it has taken me a few years to bring this recipe to you because I have been tweaking with it for years to be perfectly honest. And I have finally cracked the case with two tips that I think make all the difference. And I'm gonna share those with you. But before we get started, I wanted to let you know that I'm gonna be doing my first YouTube live video, I know, next Sunday at 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So I am doing this in collaboration with Give Essential, which is a charity that was started by two college students. I'm so impressed. And the charity is benefiting essential workers who really need our help right now. So I hope you will join me. All the information is in the description below. All you have to do is register for the live and then you'll be notified by email when it's set to go. All right, so I hope I see you there. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is start with our yeast. So in this little picture, I have a quarter cup of water. And the one thing you wanna know about yeast is you wanna make sure it's at the right temperature. So this water needs to be anywhere between 110 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Because if it's not hot enough, that yeast will not activate and you'll have a bit of a dud on your hands. If it's too hot, it will actually kill the yeast. So yeast is a living organism and so you need to be careful with it um, that you're not using water that's too hot. And then the next thing we're gonna do is add a teaspoon of sugar. So yeast needs something to feed off of and one of its favorite things is sugar. So we're gonna do one teaspoon in there. And then we're also gonna add a teaspoon of dry active yeast. And then you just want to whisk that up just like this. And here's the fun part. It's gonna get really foamy and cloudy. And this is another great way to test to make sure that your yeast is still good. Because we haven't gone too far yet. We haven't made the dough, we haven't used all of the flour, we've only used water and yeast. So if this does not activate and look totally different in like five minutes, then you know the yeast is no good and you should throw it out and start again. Okay, so my first tip when it comes to homemade pizza dough is the flour. So for years, I was making homemade pizzas with just all purpose flour and it was good, but I'm from the East Coast and pizza for me has to be chewy. There has to be like a chewiness to the dough and I just wasn't getting that. So I started researching and found out it's really the flour. You really need to use bread flour if you want that chewiness because bread flour has more protein in it, which makes more gluten, which absorbs more water, which makes the dough more chewy. So suffice it to say, get the bread flour. I'm gonna put three cups in the bowl and then we're also gonna use a teaspoon of salt just to give it some flavor and then you can whisk that up. Okay, then we're gonna add our yeast mixture and you can see it's getting really puffy right now because it's been sitting here for a few minutes. Okay, so we're gonna pour this in, but this actually isn't enough water. We also need to add another cup of warm water to the bowl as well. And then we're gonna stir this up. Then once this comes away from the side of the bowl and starts to form a dough ball, then you're ready for the next part, which is the kneading. So then you wanna turn your dough out on a floured surface, and I do use the bread flour for this, and then you're just gonna to start to kinda of knead it. So just fold it over and push it down, and fold it over and push it down. And I would do this for about 10 to 15 turns. So then go back to your bowl, make sure it's cleaned out, because we want to add some olive oil just in the bottom of the bowl, which will prevent it from sticking, and it'll also add a little bit flavor to your dough as well. Okay, so while our dough is rising, we can get on with making our tomato sauce. So I keep it pretty simple. I basically just use one can, so it's 15 ounces, of plain tomato sauce. So you don't want any other flavorings in it because we're gonna add our own. You could use jarred pizza sauce, but why when you see how quick and easy this is? And this is gonna taste so much better. Then we're also gonna add one clove of garlic, a little bit of salt, some freshly cracked pepper, and then we're also gonna add half a teaspoon of dried oregano. If you don't have oregano, you could also use dried basil, that would be good. And then I also like to add a little bit of just tomato paste, just to sweeten up the sauce a little bit. So we're gonna do two tablespoons of that. There, and that's all you have to do, easy, right? Then I just let this simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. You don't need to go far with it because we put that tomato paste in. If you're not using the tomato paste, maybe go for 20 minutes or so, just to take that acidity down a bit. All right, let's talk about what we're gonna cook this pizza in because I feel like I've tried every method under the sun. I've done the pizza stones, the pizza pans, I've even tried the pizza stone on the barbecue, which turned into a total fiasco. I don't know that I would recommend that. <laughs> Basically what happened is the pizza stone burnt, the pizza caught on fire, and I had to take the whole thing and throw it on the gravel. So we're not gonna go down that road. Instead, we are going to use my favorite method, which is a cast iron pan. The reason I like the cast iron skillet is it's a great conductor for heat. So it creates really even bake um, around the pizza. It also creates a nice puffy crust, which I think is great, and allows you to get a crisp undercrust, which I'm gonna show you my trick for in a minute. 
and it's gonna deliver a round pizza, which at the end of the day, when I've made those pizzas on the pizza stone, I always had sort of this weird, organic, flopsy-mopsy looking thing. <laughs> that was really hard to cut and serve. So that's why I like the skillet. Okay, so here's my dough that has been rising on my countertop, and I'll show you what it looks like. It looks pretty good. Um, you can see it's all nicely risen, and then we are just gonna plop it out onto my floured surface. So one thing I should say, this dough makes enough for two 12 inch pizzas in the skillet. If you're only making one, you can wrap the other one in a Ziploc bag and pop it in the freezer. And then when you go to defrost it, just put it in the fridge overnight and then you can work with it again. So it's good to just cut it in half, just like this, and then we're only gonna use half of it. And pizza dough is not like pie dough. It can be hard to roll out. So I find um, if you let it sit a minute, so like if you're having a hard time rolling it out, just give it a minute and let it rest. And then it'll be a lot easier to roll out. So sometimes you have to do it in stages. And if you need to stretch it, you can do like they do in the pizza parlors. <laughs> just kind of move it around like this and stretch it. That works too. But once you get it kind of some semblance of a circle, then you can pop it into your pan. The other thing we want to make sure is that we have a little bit of flour in our skillet. You can go ahead and plop it in there and then just stretch it out. Then once you have it all fitted in here, then I like to go around with my fingertips um, so you can kind of see like this and just kind of push it in to kind of create like the crust um, and that will help serve as a guide for where to put your tomato sauce. Okay, this is my second tip that I think is critical when it comes to homemade pizza is to get it started on the cooktop. So to give that undercrust a head start, because oftentimes when I was making pizza at home, I would always feel that the underside was always really doughy and never really crisped up enough, even with the pizza stone. So I really love this technique with the skillet because it allows you to give it a head start. And that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna put this on a medium high flame, and then we're gonna add just one ladle spoonful of the sauce. Okay. Now, we are gonna leave this here for about three minutes. You don't wanna go any more than that because it will start to get really crispy on the bottom, but I found somewhere around the three minute mark is perfect. So we're gonna then add just some shredded mozzarella cheese. Then once you get the cheese on, you can also add a little bit more oregano if you want. Okay, then once you start to see it puff up a little bit around the edges, you can even see some of the little bubbling here then it's time to put it in the oven. You do wanna make sure that your oven is preheated in advance because this has to go right in the oven. So we're gonna go for about 10 to 12 minutes uh, just when our pizza looks like it's done. All right, look at this. It's ready, fresh out of the oven. It looks so delicious. Then I also like to add a little bit of fresh basil. Now, before you serve this, another good thing to do is just to kind of go around with a knife and loosen any edges in case the cheese spilt over and baked uh, the crust to your skillet. <laughs> that can happen. And then one thing we like to do at our house is make two or three of these and put them on a big serving board. And then that way we can cut and serve all in the same place. So I am just going to transfer it. There we go. This is quite a big board for this little tiny pizza. I should have made two, but you get the picture. Okay, there you see, you get this crispy bottom. And then you also get these little like pillows of air in here. And that is something that I have only found with the bread dough. So that is my opinion on that. <laughs> Should I give it a try? Let's see. Mm. It's so yummy. So good. You do want to make sure I might have put this a little too long on the skillet because I was talking, but three minutes, I wouldn't go over that unless you want a really crispy crust, then you could go four minutes. Anyway, I hope you guys give this one a try and let me know what you think. Pizza at home, it's not as intimidating as you may have once thought. All right, you guys, I'll see you back here next week. Till then, bye.